Welcome to Draw This. In this episode, we're going to draw a sword. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to be using Corel Painter 2015 today. The first thing that I'll do is I'll select the Rectangular Shape tool, and I'll make sure that I have a stroke selected and no fill. I'm going to hold Shift while I draw to get a perfect square. And then I'm going to select the Move tool, and I'm going to hold Alt and drag. That'll drag a duplicate. I'm going to make sure that I have five squares perfectly lined up and that'll give me the proportions for my sword. I'm going to select all the layers by holding shift and clicking on the bottom layer, then I'll move those layers together with the move tool. I'm going to go ahead and go to free transform and transform all of those layers together just in case I need to scale them up or down using the scale command. If you hold shift you'll scale in proportion without squashing the squares. Then I'll go ahead and merge those layers with control E and then I'm going to select the brush tool and I'm just going to divide this top square in half. I'll select the rectangular shape tool again and now I'm going to go ahead and change the stroke to no stroke and choose a gray color for the fill. Now I'm going to draw the blade. I want this to be four squares high. You can make it as thick or as thin as you want. I'm going to go ahead and center that with the move tool and I'm going to use the rectangle tool again to draw the cross guard and the grip or the handle for the sword and hiding behind the rectangular shape tool is the oval shape tool. I'm going to select that and then hold shift and draw. This circle will be for the rain guard. Eventually we'll cut this in half. I'm going to draw the pommel which is on the bottom using the same technique. And I'm going to select all of the sword layers and I'm going to make sure that they're aligned by going to layers, align, horizontal centers. And then I'll use the move tool to go ahead and center the whole sword within my proportion squares. I'm going to go to the blade layer and select the white arrow tool and I'm going to go to the add point option here in the middle. This will let me add an anchor point at the top of this blade shape right in the center. Now it may not come out center so you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard to go ahead and nudge it left or right. We want it to be as centered as possible. You can zoom in if you need to get a little closer. I'm going to select the outer points now. Hold shift to select multiple points and I'm going to nudge those down. If you hold shift you can nudge in larger increments. I'm going to draw another guide here on my proportions layer to help me line up these points. And then I'm going to move the proportions layer up to the top of the layer group. And I'm going to draw a vertical line to divide the blade down the center. Now I'm going to dim the opacity of those guides. I'm going to return to the blade layer and select the white arrow tool. I'll select the center point and you'll see that there's these handles that let us control the curve. I'm going to select the white arrow tool and look under it for the convert anchor point option and I'm going to click on that center point to sharpen it rather than curve it. I'm going to pull up and down on these side points to go ahead and change those into curves rather than sharp points and just go ahead and try to balance them out as best I can. I'm going to nudge each of these inward once using the arrow key on my keyboard and that'll sharpen the point even more. I'm going to go to the rain guard layer, right click on it and convert it to a default layer and then I'll use the rectangular selection tool to go ahead and make a selection to trim off the bottom edge of that layer. I want to taper the handle a little bit, but the pommel's getting in the way, so I'm going to go ahead and lock that layer. And then on the grip, I'm going to nudge each of those bottom nodes in a little bit, just like I did with the blade. I'm going to unlock the pommel now that I'm done. That might be a little too big, so I'm going to free transform it and scale it down a little bit. Then I'll just make sure that everything's aligned again by selecting it all and choosing layers, align, horizontal centers, or you can use this shortcut here. Next, I'll select the mirror painting tool. You want to drag from this center dot, and we'll go ahead and align this with the vertical axis of the sword. I'm going to convert the cross guard layer to a default layer by right clicking on it. Then I'll select the bulge brush and just push in towards these corner points just to soften them and smooth them out. I'm going to select the pinch brush, and I'll use that to just paint over this curve back and forth to smooth that out as well. You can see that we're painting with symmetry with the mirror painting mode. I'm going to return to the blade layer and convert that to a default layer. I'm going to duplicate the blade and I'm going to scale it down with free transform. This is the part of the sword called the fuller. You want to make sure that it's all pretty centered so select those layers again and click the shortcut to center them horizontally. I'm going to return to the blade layer and I'm going to use the rectangular selection tool to select half of the blade. I'm going to cut and paste that. That'll put that half on its own layer and I'm going to turn on preserve transparency and just fill that layer darker. This will establish a shadow side. I'll delete the proportions layer and then I'll turn on preserve transparency and fill each of these layers with a more appropriate color. I'm going to shade now using the airbrush with preserve transparency still turned on and I'm going to keep my light on the light side and my shadow on the shadow side. So 
In this piece, my highlights are coming from the right and my shadows will be on the left. I'm using the airbrush for this and just trying to shade each of these pieces like their own three-dimensional object. So this is a sphere for the pommel, and then the grip will be a cylinder. The blade is a flat shape with two faces. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add some basic shading here and there. You can watch one of my videos on lighting and shading to get a better idea of what I'm doing here. Now I'm going to select all of the sword layers and group them into a group that's called sword. And then I'm going to turn off preserve transparency and I'm going to choose select group content. And I'm going to create a new layer and move it to the top of that group and call it gold. I'm gonna choose show hide selection, which will hide the selection. We'll choose a multiply to give this a tinting effect and then we'll use the airbrush to go ahead and paint this in gold wherever we want gold to be. You can separate your colors out onto different layers like I'm doing here. Things that are metallic and reflective will reflect what's around them in their environment. So you could add in some blues and greens if your sword is outside during the day. You could add in a background just to help you visualize that. I'm gonna add in some white highlights, and if you wanna draw with a straight line, you can switch to straight line drawing mode. The shortcut for that is V. To get back to the regular brush, it's B. I'm just gonna add in a little more shading and highlights here and there on my blade, just to help it look a little more realistic. I'm gonna create a new layer for glow and make that a screen composite method. And then I'll use the airbrush to go ahead and paint in some white glowing areas to make the sword look shiny. Next, I'll add some texture to the grip. I'll select a dark color and the sponge and with preserve transparency turned on, I'll paint lightly over the grip to give it a little bit of texture. I'm going to go ahead and just close this group and then I'm going to transform the whole group. Now you can do a number of things to this. You could rotate it, or you could scale it, or you could even use perspective warp to go ahead and put it in perspective. And that might look kind of cool, but I think I'll just have mine rotated. So there you go. That's how you draw a sword using Corel Painter 2015. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video and share it with your friends. And don't forget to click the subscribe button to get updates when I release new episodes of Draw This. I'll see you next Tuesday for a new episode.